But just like when an animal kills another animal, there's no... It's there's the natural no, order. Right, it's the natural order. No transgression. It is absolutely... Uh, uh, it's it's the natural inclination. They're just following the inclination that God has embedded in the soul of that creature, just as all of these other non-Adamic nations are just following the inclinations, the primal inclinations that exist in the in in, in the soul that and and in, in the mind that um, drives them. So the story of Genesis is a metaphor for the the point in human history at which mankind began to recognize the oneness the meaning. from a single source. Yes, that good and evil were now deriving from the same source. And when Adam went out to spread that revelation to those around them, those around them became their church. So Adam, metaphorically or in reality, this first primal archetype, not primal, but first archetypal spiritual couple, went into their generation and said to the tribes and peoples around them, look, we just came to an understanding. We just came to a, 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 an insight into reality. We don't have to be afraid of anything because actually, Everything is God. We don't have to protect ourselves from anything. You know that tribe that lives on the other side of the lake and they're always, uh, they, we always feel threatened by them and that uh, sometimes they even come around and, and pillage us and, and do all of these things and we're trying to figure out how to protect ourselves from them and we're making spears and we're arming ourselves and we're building fortifications to protect ourselves from them. We don't have to. That is God over there. And all we have to do is experience this transformation of consciousness. And if we do, if we all of a sudden begin to work this change in ourself that brings us to a state of what will later, thousands of years later, be called Christ consciousness or Buddha consciousness, if we can attain to that, then the God who dwells in them and the people are saying, what? Are you saying God dwells in them people? They are fierce. They're, they're, they're warriors. And Adam says, exactly. That's the nature of God. God is a God of war. He's a consuming fire. But we just, we, we just found out from this connection we just made with the divine that if we go over there, not trying to protect ourselves or puffing and, you know, shaking our spears, but if we go over as servants, if we go over as friends, disarmed, that the God who dwells in them will know who we are. And that they will lay down their arms and they won't be threatening us anymore. And, we, and, and if, we don't, uh, if we stop trying to protect these meager little possessions we have, we don't have to worry about anyone stealing them. As a matter of fact, we can give them away because the earth is literally full of enough for everybody. And so it's in this magic way that we now understand that we can transform the world and conquer our enemies. But Adam, of course, said, but you must realize first that the enemy is ourself. It's our own fears, our own uh, uh, inclinations to our lower nature. It's our own doubts. And so the people started listening to this. And of course, the people became their first church. But then it says that the church brought forth two sons. So out of this first realization came two spirits, those who were like Cain and those who were like Abel. Those who were like Abel were those who could assimilate that message. And they were the ones who became, in essence, the first pacifists in the earth. They were the ones who said, yes, I, we understand this. We understand this. And therefore, we renounce uh, war from this point. I renounce even the, uh, the, uh, the necessity of protecting myself. And so those who now came into the earth in the spirit of Abel became the first of those who would appear later 
in the time of Christ, who gave rise to Christianity, who are appearing now among the millions and millions in our time who are literally refusing to have anything to do with war throughout the earth. But Cain, the, those who followed the spirit of Cain in those times, were those of whom it is written, in the process of time it came to pass that Cain rose up and slew his brother Abel. Well, in one sense of that scripture, what it means is every one of us had the tendencies towards the light and darkness dwelling in ourselves. And the scripture tells us that in the process of time, after this revelation, because man is very inclined towards his own lower nature, the lower nature rose up in humanity at time and slew the higher consciousness. And all of a sudden, that which was a light that shone in the world in the time of Adam, all of a sudden was diminished as the sons of darkness now began to rule again in the earth. So the lower consciousness was con conquering the higher consciousness. And that's why the Hebrew religion is a religion, a prophetic religion, because God constantly must send prophets in to ignite the original spark, the original fire, because the darkness is very great. But this is all part of the process of creation because God had to allow us not only to see the darkness, but we had to experience it in ourselves in order for us to come to a full and um, conscious state of God realization. So the last 6,000 years is the history of not only darkness, the spirit of Cain coming to its absolute perfection. And remember, God put a mark on Cain when he killed his brother Abel. That mark shows up in the book of the Revelation as the mark of the beast. Anyone who uh, yields to his own beastly nature, even if he does it in the name of God, is marked. Because he is, that is the spirit of anyone who finds justification for killing another human being in the context of these teachings that began with Adam and that are coming to perfection in the mystery of Christ.